Hi there, and there's our message here to continue with our classical mechanics course. Oscillatory motion is one of the most important types of motion in physics. First, because we can find an analytical solution and that's always cool. Remember that we couldn't find it for the general motion of the pendulum or for the uh, skydiver. Uh, second, because it is ubiquitous in nature, you find oscillatory motion in the oscillations of atoms in a crystal, you find oscillatory motion in satellites moving around planets, you find oscillatory motion on a spring. Third, because you can approximate many physical systems of interest as oscillators. For example, assume that matter is composed of microscopic oscillators that emit radiation. You will find a black body radiation spectrum and you will open the door to quantum physics. And fourth, because there are many cases where the physics is not exactly that of an oscillator, but for a small energy, you can simulate them as oscillators. Consider a one dimensional motion of a particle. This particle might move in a very complicated potential energy landscape, kind of like in a roller coaster with ups and downs. Uh, now consider that the particle is in one of the minimums. If its kinetic energy is zero, the particle will be at rest at the minimum. But if a tiny perturbation kicks it from the well, there will be a force that makes it go back. As a matter of fact, if there is no friction, the particle will be moving back and forth around the equilibrium position. If the energy gained is small, the particle will move around that minimum. Even if the minimum is not symmetric, assuming it is symmetric is a very good approximation. So we can do a Taylor series expansion of the force acting on the particle. Because at the equilibrium point there is no force on the particle, the first term is zero. If we truncate at first order, we have a recovery force that pushes the particle back to the origin always. I define this derivative as minus k. The minus comes from seeing that the force opposes the displacement. f equals to minus kx. Yeah, this is the restoring force of a spring, an old friend of yours. We know that there is a relationship between the force and potential energy. The force is equal to minus the gradient of the potential energy. If we integrate this force, we recover the potential energy, which happens to be parabolic as a function of the position. This we already knew, but the important remark here is that if we are in the small oscillations regime, we can simulate almost any potential well as the restoring force of the spring. So this is a very important kind of motion which is worth analyzing in some detail. Now, let's go back to our old friend Newton and his second law. The force is minus kx, Hooke's law where x is the displacement from the equilibrium position. We could have written delta x, but I just take x naught to be zero, and the math stuff gets a bit more simple. The differential equation we have to solve now is minus kx equals to mx two dots. Let me rewrite it as x two dots plus omega square x equals zero, where omega is the square root of k over m. So, what is the solution of this differential equation? Well. It's a linear second order differential equation. From your course on calculus, you should remember that the solution of this kind of differential equation is an exponential or a trigonometric function. The solution can be written in different forms. x equals to b times e to the i omega t plus c times e to the minus i omega t, or it can also be written as x equal to d cosine of omega t plus e times sine of omega t, which using trigonometric relations is the same as x equals to a cosine of omega t plus phi, where a, b, c, d, e, and phi are integration constants that depend on the initial conditions. All these are the same solution. Depending on the problem you are solving, you might prefer one over the other. In our case, I'll use the last expression. It clearly shows what's going on. This is a periodic motion, sinusoidal. The oscillator, the oscillator goes from plus a position to a minus a position with an angular frequency omega. It is the amplitude of the motion, the maximum distance from the equilibrium position. And the oscillator at time equals to zero had an initial phase phi. First, it is important to check that omega has a unit of angular frequency. 
Omega, omega was defined as the square root of k over m. For the spring, we know that k has the unit of newton over meter. That divided by kilograms gives kilograms times meter over second square over meter and over kilogram. Then the square root lets us with seconds to the negative one. That's good. The period of the oscillations is t equals to two pi over omega or two pi square root of omega over k. The frequency in hertz is one over t. From here, we can derive and find the velocity as a function of time, x dot equal to minus a omega sine of omega t plus v. And if we derive again, we get the acceleration x two dots equals to minus a omega squared times the cosine of omega t plus v. The constants a and v are determined from the initial conditions for the position and velocity. Well, this solution is known as known the as simple, simple harmonic, harmonic oscillator. oscillator. Now, remember when we talked about the pendulum? In that case, the equation in the tangential direction was minus mg sine of theta equal to ml theta two dots. Well, we couldn't find an analytical solution to it. But if the oscillations are small, we can approximate the sine of theta by theta and we get theta two dots plus g over l theta equal to zero. We define here omega as square root of g over l and we have the equation of the simple harmonic oscillator. So the solution for small oscillations is theta of t equals to a cosine of omega t plus phi. Where again, a and phi are determined from the initial conditions. The pendulum undergoes simple harmonic motion of frequency square root of g over l. Look at the frequency only depends on the planet where you are, g, and on the length of the pendulum. This was observed by Galileo Galilei about 400 years ago, when he was bored in some church in Italy. He passed the timey-wimey observing the oscillations of the hanging lamps and did something useful instead. Now, let's have a look at a different but very much the same problem. In the 2012 movie Total Recall, at the end of the 21st century, only the UK and Australia are habitable. They built the fall, a tunnel that goes across the earth, and some transport just uses free fall to go from one end to the other end. In 60 seconds. Oh, Let's not be very picky with the fact that Great Britain islands are not the antipodes of Australia. Let's study the motion of this vehicle. Assume that there is no air friction here. For simplicity, we will also assume that the density of the Earth is constant, which we know it is not, but let's make life easy. At the beginning, when they leave England, the velocity will be very small, but increasing as the Earth is attracting the transport. As they go deep into the core, the force of gravity is smaller as they're closer to the center and the mass above their heads cancels out. Once they pass the center, then gravitational force will point back to the center, reducing their velocity, which will be zero right when they reach Australia. So the force of is the force of gravity, which is negative g, the mass of the Earth, the mass of the transport divided by the position square, because it's just one dimension, I will use x. And Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces is mx two dots. Okay, let's make them equal. I have the mass of the transport x two dots is equal to minus g capital M, mass of the transport divided by x squared. But the mass of the earth that is affecting the transport is just the one enclosing this volume. So I have to write that mass in terms of the, the position of the transport. So that mass, if the density is constant, is the density multiplied by the volume. So rho 4 pi thirds of x to the power of 3. That's the, the radius at which, the distance at which they are from the center of the Earth. So 
I substitute this here and I have mass mass cancel. This is x two dots equals to minus g capital M, which is all this stuff, rho four pi over three, x to the power of three divided by x squared. X two dots is equals to minus g rho four pi divided by three x. I put everything to the other side and I have that x two dot plus omega square x is equals to zero if I defi define omega is square to be g rho 4 pi over 3. And this is the equation of the simple harmonic oscillator. That's the angular frequency. I can calculate the time and check that it's not the time that they say, but of course I'm assuming the density is constant so I'm expecting some differences from what it should be. You can check that this has units of uh, one of a second, omega has units of one of a second, just check the units of g, check the units of rho and check that everything works and I don't need to do any other, nothing else, I already know the solution and for this particular case of a spherical cow, no friction, everything is perfect going through the center of the earth, the position of the transport is a times the cosine of omega t plus phi where omega is this and a is the radius of the earth and phi is just the initial condition if i drop from here well that should be uh, zero simple harmonic oscillator a physical system and type of motion that you're going to be seeing again and again and again in your career as a physicist and now in the next video we're going to start to introduce non-spherical and in the vacuum cows will start to add uh, friction and we will add some external forces and we'll get some results that again you're going to be seeing again and again and again in physics. May the science be with you. Mm -hmm.